Tell me about the counterweight killings. Rumor has it that the Sun Emperor's private assassin is here in Ankh-Morpork. Silencing those who have found out about the conspiracy to keep the Agatean Empire out of the secret trade talks at Ecclepon, thus ensuring that the counterweight continent's stature in the world economy is weakened. H hold on, slow down a minute. Who's the Sun Emperor? The ruler of the Agatean Empire, of course. The Agatean Empire? That's on the counterweight continent, is it? Shh. Not so loud. Don't you know about the patrician's conspiracy to deny the existence of the counterweight continent to the populace? He could have us killed just for talking about it! But everyone knows that the counterweight continent is real. We had a tourist from there a couple of years ago. Privately, everyone knows, yes. But publicly, it's still just a legend. And the patrician makes sure it stays that way. So what you're telling me is that an assassin from a nation that publicly doesn't exist is here killing off certain influential figures. Exactly! And all this has to do with a trade meeting at Ecclepon. Apparently, there may be more to it than that. Why Ecclepon? That's hundreds of leagues away. Yes, but Ecclepon is the nearest port to the Akadian Empire. And agents of the Oka Revolution from the Counterweight Continent are going to be at the meeting. Uh, I see. Why was Mundy hung upside down when he was murdered? And why were his eyes poked out? His body was... except... Do you know Malachite? They're planning to have him killed. They? Who are they? Nobody knows who they are. Only... maybe. I think they're the same ones who are putting... What do you know about Sapphire? That troll is nothing but trouble. She's in with the Breccia, you know, the troll mafia. She ran up huge gambling debts and now she worked for them until she's paid them off. Do you know anything about Count von Uberwald? Bah! What can you tell me about Jasper Horst? Horst is a major player in several conspiracies. The Brindisian Illuminati are still after him for stealing the unholy pale. Certainly not someone to be messed with. What do you know about Sapphire? That troll. She's in with she. What do you know about that cheesy cheese? What do you know about a golden sword? 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 You are not worthy to talk of that. Be silent, lest I smite you. Never speak of the sword again until you have proved yourself worthy in the eyes of Errata. The Milka brought some interesting cargo into Ankh Morpork, I heard. Oh, yes. Most people know that the Milka is part of the advanced fleet for the Clatchian Navy, but not everyone knows that they are smuggling top grade Clatchian pornography into the city. It's all part of the Brindisian Illuminati's plot to corrupt the moral minority and make Ankh Morpork the most depraved city on the Discworld. It's already the most depraved city on the Discworld. Now you see what we're up against. Actually, the pawn wasn't a patch on the homemade stuff.
It would have been satisfying to smash up one of the statues, but it would probably... Most of the statues were a mystery to me, but I recognized the odd face. There was Zephyrus, the god of slight breezes, and Lamentatio, the goddess of interminable opera. I thought I could see FedEx, messenger of the gods, in one corner. Religious emblems were scattered throughout the place. The sacred lace of Hyperopia, the goddess of shoes. The holy trolley of Mr. Safeway. The blessed chamber pot of the whinging martyrs of Constipata. Anything could become a sacred relic if you weren't careful enough. Behind Mooncalf was a beautiful stained glass window depicting Morphine, the Angel of Dreams, passing the recipe for the Discworld's first pizza to a mortal. I was drawn to Mooncalf by his religious fervor. He was the kind of man who wouldn't miss a single event in the temple, no matter how trivial. He also struck me as the kind of fanatic who knew a hundred words for infidel, and not one for compromise. You, you with the hat, have you accepted Anuanu into your heart? The name isn't you with the hat, it's Luton. And no, I haven't accepted Anu Anu into my heart. Why should I? For it is written in the Book of Kelpie, He who has not the spirit of Anu Anu in his heart shall have his heart eaten by the Divine One on the Day of Judgment. I'll take that chance. Oh, you may mock, infidel, but the Day of Judgment is coming, mark my words. The signs are clear, the omens are unquestionable, the stars are right and the auguries are undeniable. What about the auspices? The auspices are fair to light with a small chance of Judgment Day later in the Eon. I think you're taking the auspice. Did your church buy that window? We are not a church, we're a cult. What's the difference? Demographics. Churches appeal to the high society element. Good for funding, but bad for grassroots support. Now your average cult has much more of a street-level membership. Not so much money, but easier to get things done. Well, did your cult buy that window? No. It was purchased by the Eternal Seers of Revelation Joe many years ago. It depicts the moment when the Divine Prophet was given the recipe for pizza by the Creator. How come you're working in front of it? The Eternal Seers ran out of support decades ago. It figures. Now let me get this straight. The Eternal Seers of Revelation, Joe, worshipped pizza. No, my child. The legends say that the first pizza was created by the Clatchian mystic Ron Ron Revelation Joe Sawadi, who claimed to have been given the recipe in a dream by the creator of the Discworld himself. Allegedly, the creator said that the pizza was what he had intended all along. Those who have seen the original say that what the creator had in mind was a small cheese and pepperoni affair with a few black olives and things like mountains and seas got added out of last minute enthusiasm, as so often happens. So who were the eternal seers? The survivors of the schism of the turnwise ones and the resulting grand jihad. Grand jihad? Yes. After the deaths of some 25,000 people, the faithful were allowed to add one small bay leaf to the recipe. So is this divine figure in the window the creator? Oh no. It is blasphemy for any to depict the rat face of the creator. Because of his divine stature? No. Because it is clear that world creation is not a divine act, but a rather straightforward mechanical function. Hence, to praise the creator would be blasphemy. How does the creator feel about that? He seems content. He's had some success with his design, apparently. The details are sketchy. So, here I am, a fresh punter. Why should I choose your religion over anyone else's? Because Anuanu is the true god of gods, more mighty and strong than all the others put together. About half the gods in this temple alone claim to be the true god of gods. But Anuanu reveals himself through his divine miracles. Such as? Ever looked at your thumb? Ever really thought about it? Ever considered what you couldn't do if you didn't have a thumb? Anu Anu is the god of thumbs? No, but Anu Anu bites away the thumbs of the non-believer. I'm not convinced. Anything else? Join the cult of Anu Anu now to receive a free faux pearl statuette of the great god Anu Anu, a $90 value, absolutely free. Be the envy of your friends as they roast in the fires of Sogorop. Thanks, but I'll pass. 
So what is Anu Anu the god of? Anu Anu is about being bound to one single concept or idea. He is power incarnate. Come on, level with me. What is he the god of? It's not to be discussed with non-believers. So this is less of a religion and more of a lucky dip. Oh, I feel sorry for you on Judgment Day. You keep mentioning Judgment Day. What do you mean? Mark my words, it's coming. Darkness and evil shall descend on this city and fetid corruption shall consume the very souls of the unbelievers. Only the followers of Anu Anu shall be saved. Darkness and evil? How exactly are we going to tell Judgment Day from any other day in Ankh-Morpork? By the time you realize what's going on, it shall be too late. It generally is. Does the word Azeal mean anything to you? I prefer to involve my... I asked Mooncalf where he was when Mundy was murdered. He seemed to take it in his stride. Perhaps religious fanatics are used to being suspects in murder investigations. I was holding a service at that time. Where? Here, in the sanctum of the Temple of Small Gods. So you have witnesses. But of course. My entire congregation saw me give a glorious sermon in honor of Anu Anu. So you can give me the names of some of your congregation to back up your alibi. Betray the confidence of my flock? You must think me shallow of faith, Luton, to propose such a barbaric plan of action. Shall I take that as a no, then? Does three... I prefer to invite... I asked Mooncalf if Carlotta was in the temple when Mundy was murdered. Frankly, he didn't seem very sure. His face took on a vacant look, like someone trying to remember who won the boat race in the year of the asthmatic antelope. Yes. Yes, I believe I saw her in the temple that night. Does she come here often? She is indeed a regular of the Temple of Small Gods. I myself have lectured her at great length on the virtues of the cult of Anu Anu. Why does she come here? Why does anyone come here, Luton? For answers. For absolution. Perhaps simply out of boredom. But mostly for something to give her life a meaning. What makes you think life has a meaning? Twenty million zealots can't all be wrong. There are twenty million members of your cult? Not of this cult, but every religion is testament to the quest for meaning, even if our cult is the only true religion. Don't you feel like you're just servicing a group of selfish, self-obsessed, half-wit deities whose ability to survive without you is considerably less than your ability to survive without them? Watch your tongue, Luton. Talk like an atheist and you can expect a lightning bolt to strike you where you least expect. I'll take my chances. What do you know about a dwarf named Al Kali? My time belongs to the god Anu Anu, and I'd thank you not to waste it. Do you know a tr No. Do you know a woman? They are not followers of. Have you heard of the counterweight killings? I have not. Nothing at all? Heard about any ritualistic killings in Ankh Morpork? Again, I have not. I was suspicious. Most religious fanatics would have turned the counterweight killings into fuel for their zealous fire. Mooncalf's silence spoke more than words. Uh, not literally. It wouldn't be much of a silence if it spoke. I imagine silences get kicked out of school for that sort of thing. The point was, I was suspicious of Mooncalf. There was something he wasn't telling me. I asked Mooncalf where he was. He seemed to take it in his stride. Perhaps... Here. So you... But if... My... So you... Betray... You might... Shall I... I'm trying to find out why a troll named Sapphire would lie to me. Any thoughts? I prefer to involve my... Do you know anything about Count Von Uberwald? My time belongs... Do you know a troll but... No. You don't happen to know how a troll singer might end up with a lot of money by any chance. I prefer to involve...
The game Whirl was croupier for used a Karak deck, the distilled wisdom of the ancients painted onto cards. Can we talk or do I have... Business is slow, we can talk. Do you know what this is? It looks like a purse. I think I have something of yours in it. Really? Oh yes, so you do. And what do you know, my memory is suddenly much improved. I thought it might be. You know a troll named Sapphire, don't you? Yeah, I know Sapphire. She's a good customer. Always plays with cash. Never wins anything. Some trolls aren't born lucky, I guess. She never wins. She wins a little, but she always loses it again. She can't hold on to money. Few people can in this place. By the time she walks out the door, she's always a loser. Is there any chance she could have won big and you wouldn't know about it? If she won it here, I'd know about it. <laughs> I reckon a lot of meetings must go on. I reckon anything interesting you... Sorry. Any way I can make you less... Listen, Le... Saturnalia is hot, but the wo... Anything more you can tell me about Sapphire's losing streak? What's to tell? That troll holds on to money like a drunken dwarf holds on to his temper. Sapphire busy. Leave her alone. I know about your problems. Problems? The debts. The huge losses. You're struggling just to keep your head above water. I bet you've had to make all kinds of nasty compromises just to keep yourself going. What you talking about? Who been saying such things about me? Does it matter? It mattered to Sapphire. All right. I heard it from Whirl, and he should know. Huh, <laughs> Whirl. He don't know everything goes on at Saturnalia. So, you won a lot of money at the casino. Yes, already told you. Big win. You won big at the casino, but no one at the casino seems to remember you winning. They lie. Sapphire won big. And this mysterious meeting as well. You say that had nothing to do with the money. Forget about meeting. Meeting not important. Not important, eh? I think it is. I say you met with someone and they gave you the money. Someone who had something to hide. Someone who'd pay good money to keep it quiet. Who was it, Sapphire? No one. It wasn't no one who paid you, Sapphire. It was someone who was interested in me, wasn't it? Someone who didn't want me digging around after Therma. Why? What's so important that someone would pay you to cover up for them? Who is it? No one. You'd better tell me, because I'm going to find out one way or another. And if you don't tell me, when I find out who it is, I'll tell them you told me where to find them. No, she'll kill me. Who? Who'd kill you? <laughs> Therma. It was Therma. I've been blackmailing Therma. She not want to be found. Therma is still alive? Yeah. Good. Arrange a meeting with her for me. What? You heard me. Face it, Sapphire, your little scam is broken. If you want me to keep quiet about your little windfall, you're going to have to fix a meeting with Therma for me. Therma won't do it! Well, you'd better make her do it. Because otherwise I'm going to go straight to the Guild of Thieves, Burglars, and Allied Trades to tell them about you. They don't take kindly to unlicensed blackmail. You do that to me? Look into my eyes and tell me if I'm bluffing. All right. Give me some time. 
I'll leave message at your office when it arranged. I look forward to it. It's a pleasure doing business with you, Sapphire. You're a cold one, Luton. Not as cold as you, I reckon. I decided to leave Sapphire alone after that. I'd got what I wanted. Still here? Here's as good as it. I want to talk to you about something important. Really? I can't wait. Not here. It's too public. Your place or mine? Yours is probably safer. Let's go. We barely spoke at all on the way over, and there was a certain tension between us. Gods help me, I liked it. Well, we're alone. What did you want to talk to me about? You've got a lot of smooth moves, Carlotta. You've managed to string me along like a kitten. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you lying to me, sister. I'm talking about the way you used me to track down Mundy, and how you were planning to cut me out of the action when I found him. You're paranoid, Luton. Oh, I know I'm paranoid. But just because I'm paranoid doesn't mean you're not a lying, thieving lowlife. Tell me about the Golden Sword. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I think you do. And so does Jasper Horst. You spoke to Horst? Yes, I spoke to Horst. And he seemed to think that I had possession of the sword. Apparently, Mundy had it. Only he died before he could deliver it. Horst thinks I killed him and took the sword. I didn't want you to get involved, Luton. It was too dangerous. Ah, don't pull the hysterical woman act on me, Carlotta. It won't work. All right, you got me. I used you. Everybody uses everyone, Luton. It's the way of things. Friendships are just what happens when you've used someone for so long, it becomes habitual. You're a bitter little lady. It's a bitter little world. What now? You tell me everything. Why? Because you need me. I don't need anyone. You'd like to think so, wouldn't you? But even you aren't totally independent, Carlotta. You need the Count's money, for one. One word from me and I could get you cut off. He wouldn't dare. He's too bound by tradition. Perhaps. But can you really afford to take that chance? What's the deal, Luton? Straight cut. I'll help you recover the sword. We split the profit. You think you can trust me enough for that to work? No, but this isn't about trust. It's about money. You don't trust me any more than you trust Horst. But I figure you'd work with him if it got you the money. You're smart, Luton, but you've got one thing wrong. What's that? I trust you more than I trust Horst. Oh, I'm touched. But I reckon you'd trust a rattlesnake before you'd trust Horst. You're a good judge of character. Hang around with scum long enough and you learn to tell the different types of scum apart. Horst is the treacherous kind. What about me? You're just a woman, Carlotta, and that's not a compliment. Why do you hate women so much? I hate everyone and everything. No one gets special treatment. Now tell me the real story between you and Mundy. Mundi wasn't my lover. He was my contact. He was supposed to be bringing the artifact in from Sota. But something went wrong on the way. I don't know what it was, but Mundi never made his rendezvous. I went with Reagan to the wharf to meet him, but he wasn't there. Who's Reagan? Tut tut. We have been lax in our investigating. Just tell me who he is, Carlotta. Henning's friend, if that's a meaningful word when it comes to the old relic. You should talk to him about Reagan, not me. Do you know where Reagan is now? No. He dropped me at the Temple of Small Gods. And that's the last I saw of him. Did he know what was going on? Reagan? Ha! No, I never told him anything. Everything I told him would have gone straight to the Count. 
Anything else you haven't told me? I'm sure there's plenty of things I haven't told you, but the girl's got to have some secrets. You're trouble, Carlotta. Admit it, Luton. You like trouble. What if I do? I know what's going on inside of you, Luton. You're just like any other man, only a little more so. When she kissed me, fire burned in my veins and I felt alive. Have you ever kissed someone who you didn't know whether to love or to hate? Well, other than your parents. Not that I'm prying into your private life, just trying to get my point across. Something changed in me at that point, and I knew I'd never be the same again. I guess we have a deal then. With my brains and your looks, we could go places. What about with my brains and your looks? We could still go places. They just wouldn't be as nice. So, now we're working together, is there anything you'd like to tell me? What like? Anything you've kept back from me. Any lies you'd like to confess to, and secrets you're still hiding. A girl's got to have some secrets, Luton. I'll see you around, Carlotta. I hope so. I see sir has... A sir, who would... Is the Count receiving guests? No, but he will see you. Your interest in the Mundy case wouldn't have something to do with your missing companion, would it? Why, Mr. Luton? I'm impressed. You actually do have some detective skills. What's the deal? He was my friend. Perhaps my last friend. He was a dwarf of simple tastes, and when I was younger, he drove my carriage for me. These days, given that I am confined to the conservatory, I have no need for a driver. But I kept raking on the payroll so that I should have someone to talk to. When did he go missing? Three days ago. He took the carriage out that night and has not been seen since. And you thought Carlotta might have employed me to look for him? I was hoping, yes. You could always employ me to find him. Wouldn't that be a conflict of interests? I don't see why. Anyway, there isn't a conflict of interest that I know about that couldn't be solved with a generous cash settlement. Be assured that if you can find Reagan, I can offer you substantial recompense. Then I'll see what I can do. The Count gave me an iconograph of Reagan to help my investigations. My mind was already racing. Three days ago, the Milka arrives. Three days ago, Reagan disappears. Now, I believe in coincidences. Coincidences happen every day. But I don't trust coincidences. Something deeper was going on here, and I was going to find out what. Because I can't stand a secret, and because I have a burning need to find the truth. But mostly, because there was a wad of money in it for me if I found out. 